This is Dan Abbott. It's just for the AEDD 170 parametric modeling class at Southern Maine Community College. Uh, this video is about making your own fasteners. Now there is a toolbox in SolidWorks. There are times when the toolbox uh, has caused problems for people. And what I'm going to do is to show you how you can make your own fastener. But to begin with, there are two possible ways to, to approach the chamfer on the nut. So if we take a look at the sizes, we're going to do an M10 by 1.5 uh, metric nut. So it's going to be 16 millimeters across the flats. We'll ignore the minimum, we'll go with the maximum. We don't care about the width across the corners. And the maximum width is 8.4. So we're going to do 16 and 8.4 as our numbers. So we'll start a new part. I'm going to start a metric part by picking a metric template. If you don't have a metric template, make sure that your units are set to millimeters, set to millimeters not meters, millimeters. Now go to sketch. We'll sketch this on the uh, right plane. I'm going to sketch a polygon, snap it to the origin, bring it out. Distance across flats was 16, so we'll type in a 16, and we'll make one side vertical so that it's fully defined. And we'll go back over here to extruded boss. We're going to extrude that 8.4. Is that true? 8.4. So do an 8.4 extrusion. Now this is going to be a nut, and because it's a nut, it's symmetrical, and because it's symmetrical, I'm going to do a mid-plane extrusion, so it looks like that. Now I'm going to show you, and actually, why don't we go ahead and put the size of the hole in there. This is going to be the minor diameter, and the minor diameter for a 10 millimeter nut is going to be 8.5, so 8.5 millimeters. Now we'll come out of dimensions, we'll come out of the sketch, and so now we've got the nut with a hole in it. What we don't have is a chamfer. There are a couple of ways to approach this. And one of the reasons I want this chamfer in here when you create it is you're going to put this um, nut into various assemblies. And when you create a drawing, I want the nut symbol to be correct. And the nut symbol requires that you have that uh, chamfer that goes around. So we need to know the size of the chamfer. So here are the uh, dimensions for uh, a metric nut or actually any nut in the sense of this angle. So that chamfer up there is anywhere from 15 to 30 degrees. We're going to make it 30. I sometimes make it 45 so it looks a little better. But let's say we want to do this accurately. We're going to make that a 30 degree angle. Now where does it start? It starts at the tangent edge of the distance across flats. That's where the cut starts and goes down. So I'm going to do this one of two ways. First way I'm going to do it is by sketching on this surface I'm going to put a circle, starts here, and is tangent to that edge. Now you notice that the icon for tangency shows up, but it's white. That means it'll make it tangent, but it won't create a relationship that's tangent, which means you can change the size after the fact. So I'm going to pick the circle, pick the line, and, and add a tangent relationship so that it's fully defined. Come back out to features. We're going to do an extruded cut. Now when we do this extruded cut, I'm going to flip the side to cut and I'm going to give an angle of 60 degrees. That's to accomplish the 30 degree angle that I want. When I get done, I now have the chamfer, and if I look straight at it, like so, it now looks, in a drawing, like a hex-headed fastener is supposed to look. But because that angle is so shallow, although it's the correct angle, it doesn't leave much of a triangle showing. So we could do that at 45 degrees, because it really is just for the symbol purpose. Um, the other way to do this, is to create a tool and do a revolve cut around it. So we're going to look right at it from the front. I'll do another sketch. This sketch is going to be on the front plane, plane I'm looking at right here. And I'm going to start by putting a center line right down through the origin. And I'm going to sketch a triangle here. And that triangle is going to represent the cut that I want. Now. I'm going to dimension that location from the center by making it the same as the distance across flats. I'll bring that down. I'll make that 16. And now I'm going to put an angle between here and here. I'm going to do an angle between this line and this line. And if I want it to be correct, it'll be 30 degrees. If I want it to look a little better, I'll make it 45 degrees. Now that's a fully defined sketch. That's essentially like making tooling. I'm going to go to Features, Revolved Cut. It's going to revolve around the only 
center line there is. I pick OK. I look at it from the front. And you can see that either way is going to give me exactly the same result. The cut with an angle of the circle or the cut by revolving around as though I were working on a lathe. Now if we go back and look at the, um, this is from a, a vendor site, look at the uh, sketch of the nuts. It tells you that a countersink at started threads is permissible and you will find that it will be a countersink there. That countersink could vary, but what I'm going to do is countersink it um, so that it goes down to the bottom of the thread. So we'll come up to fill it, we'll go to chamfer, pick that edge, pick that edge, and the countersink is going to be 45 degrees, and we're going to do a 0.75 because the minor diameter is 8.5, the major diameter is 10. You subtract them and get 1.5. That's 0.75 on each side. So if I put that chamfer in like that, now we've got the chamfer in the inside of the nut. Now we're going to put a cosmetic thread in there, and the cosmetic thread we can do by inserting an annotation. It's a cosmetic thread. doesn't quite show on the video, probably. It's right below the word datum target. So I pick cosmetic thread. Over here it asks for thread settings. What it's really saying is, where do you want this to start? So I want it to start here and go to there. So let me eliminate this one. I didn't mean to pick it. So I'm going to start it right there. Well, you notice the thread size right now is set by default to 25. That's not what size I want. What I want is 10. 10 is the size of my thread. It goes right out to the bottom of that chamfer. Now instead of, well, we'll go up to next, or we can go, yeah, let's do up to next. So now I've got a, uh, a cosmetic thread. It doesn't look much like a thread, although it does show the simplified thread symbol. But if I go to Options, under Options, Document Properties, Detailing, one, I can display or not display cosmetic threads but I can also display a shaded version. And if I display the shaded version of the cosmetic thread, now it actually looks like a thread. It just kind of paints something thread-like inside.